My nephew Gray is a teen. When he was eight, his mom and unborn sister passed away after she had a placental abruption. Gray was in the car with his parents at the time it happened and he watched his mom die. My brother Ken also watched his wife die. Ken fell apart and so did Gray, but Ken focused more on his grief and healing than he did on Gray's and ignored Gray's grief further when he decided 18 months later that he was ready to date again. Ken met his second wife Vera when Gray was 10 and they married five months into their relationship. Vera told Gray that she would do everything she could to be a good mom to him and fill the shoes his mom left better than anyone could. She joked more than once that she might even be better than his old mom. That, along with the fact that Gray felt as if Ken was replacing his mom and moving too fast, meant Gray never liked or bonded with Vera. She's tried very hard to get close to him, but he's not interested. I tried talking to Ken about getting Gray help and talking to a therapist himself. My parents always assure me Gray will come around in time. A little over a year ago, Ken and Vera's newborn son didn't make it due to a fatal abnormality that ran in Vera's family, which she was not aware of. She ended up needing a C-section because of complications, and afterwards she was no longer able to have more children. Gray did not have much of a reaction to the loss. He was open with me that he didn't really feel any grief, despite everyone expecting him to. To him, he lost no sibling. He was never excited for him or considered him anything more than his dad's baby with someone. But everyone expected it and even our parents told Ken that Grey would fall apart in time. During all this, Vera has wanted Grey to be there for her, comfort her and be the son he's never wanted to be to her. Recently, Vera made a greater effort to try to get Grey to be there and comfort her. She confronted him and told him that she needed him to be more caring. This happened in front of my parents and my family. She told him she felt like he didn't care, that he can't even support his family. He told her she wasn't his family and he would never be there to support her. Ken jumped in and said it's like he doesn't care and that's sick. He then went on a rant about how Grey should be so much more concerned and loving toward Vera and he called him a monster for refusing to be there for her after the worst loss of her life. I told Ken that he shouldn't talk to Grey that way. I told him Grey is not a monster for refusing to be Vera's emotional support human and that he expected way too much given the very sour and complicated relationship that was there already. My parents and Ken thought I was horrifically wrong for stepping in. Gray thanked me and told me Ken doesn't get that he views him as a cold monster and that he's ashamed of him. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. That boy watched his mom leave him when he was old enough to remember how much he loved her. I would say over a year is a reasonable time to start dating, but to marry her five months in is insane to me. Then, for Vera to call herself his mom and even dare to joke that she's better than his old mom is even more messed up. Losing a baby is extremely heartbreaking. However, after the crap she's talked about, God, don't like ugly. Boo boo. Yeah, karma hits again. You don't get to love a child while also stepping on the heart of another. Grey deserves better. And that poor boy has gone through more than most of us. To have any emotional expectation placed on him while he's still young seems impossible. He needs therapy and a family that supports him. Also, your brother and his wife are idiots. Your nephew will probably need your support to know he has an alternative to where to live or who to associate with once he's an adult and can get away from them. Yes, everyone else is allowed to grieve and get support, but Gray has never been given that. Three more years and your brother will be wondering why his son only visits you and is in no contact with him. You sound like the only level-headed person in your family. Please, always be there for Gray. My mother-in-law wants to be in the room when I give birth. She is an unpleasant and pushy woman and none of her daughters allowed her near them when they gave birth. My sisters-in-law are all at least 12 years older than my husband and are all done having kids. I'm the last chance for my mother-in-law to see the birth of a grandkid. I have zero interest in letting that judgmental old woman see me down there. She has objected to me from the beginning because I have tattoos and am not in any way interested in being a stay-at-home wife. I have a lot of tattoos and a career I plan on continuing, and I have tattoos down there that are none of her business. My husband is her baby boy. He's a good husband and has stood up for me against her many times. He put his foot down when she tried to interfere with our wedding, when she tried to convince him that we should move to his hometown where he could work, but I wouldn't be able to find an employer in my line of work. He said no, because my career is important to me, and... While we can live off his earnings, the cost of living is lower in his hometown, our combined earnings are much better altogether. She started crying to him that she only wants to see a grandchild being born. All her friends have experienced it and she wants it. 
He's starting to crumble under her emotional blackmail. So I made it clear that the only way I would agree was if, before the birth, my husband made arrangements for my father to witness him getting a colonoscopy. He would need a ride anyway, so two birds, one stone, you know. He said I'm being ridiculous, but I said none of my brothers would let my dad see them getting a camera shoved up their butt, and he felt left out. He finally understood my point, but his mother was upset that I used such a stupid comparison. She says that it isn't the same thing at all. I offered to change it to me watching her get a Brazilian wax and she hasn't called in a week. I know seeing a baby being born might be her dream, but I'm not interested. Am I the idiot? Ha ha ha, you pulled that off perfectly. Not the idiot, screw her. She'll probably wait until it's closer to your due date to pressure you since you'll be under stress from the incoming birth or pull off some type of stunt. I don't know when or how watching a baby being born became a spectator sport. My sister-in-law was worried about people coming to the hospital, so she just straight up didn't tell anyone when she was going into labor. We got a text a couple of days after the birth with a picture of the baby. In some situations, you just have to not put up with all the bull. You need to get in contact with your birthing center or hospital and put some things in place. You need to let them know who you want in the room with you and who you don't and that your husband does not have a veto over you when it comes to this. Also, let them know that if he starts to cause a scene because you won't let his mummy dearest in, you want him gone too. My husband was injured when we were in high school, almost 18 years ago now, and uses a wheelchair now. We have four children, his teen son from a previous relationship, a pre-tween daughter, a kindergarten age son, and a young toddler daughter. My parents usually host a big Christmas every year with all the kids and their families. Sometimes it's at their home, and sometimes it's at a vacation destination. In previous years, it's always been accessible for my husband. Still, this year, they've chosen to have it at a mountain ski resort that is largely inaccessible and would have a lot of activities that would leave my husband out, so we told them we were going to do our own thing for Christmas this year. No biggie, right? They responded with, How about you send the kids? You can do your own thing. We responded that we wouldn't be sending our kids and that if we couldn't all attend, nobody would attend. They're upset and accusing us of withholding the kids from something that brings them joy and being bad parents. Am I the idiot for telling my parents that my kids won't attend Christmas if everyone can't attend? This is amazing. Of course not the idiot. They've excluded your husband from Christmas and their solution is that you can split up your entire family for the holidays. Do they have a problem with your husband? Honestly, I would almost feel like this would be less awful if they'd done it on purpose than if they've been that level of ignorant towards him and your whole family. They want you to send a young toddler over. I mean, sending the other children is bad enough, but a toddler? That's insane. You only get to spend a number of Christmases with your kids before they grow up and have their own families. After that, they'll put their families first. It's the natural order of things. Enjoy this Christmas with your husband and kids. If your family didn't consider your husband's accessibility needs, you don't have to give up your kids for the holiday. You can offer to visit with the kids another time. It's pretty obnoxious of your parents to assume they have rights to your kids. Wow. Crippled chick here. I feel sick reading this story. Your parents should be ashamed of themselves. I suspect whatever solution is reached, your husband will feel bad about things. I know I would internalize that BS and feel like I'm the problem. Please hug him and ensure he knows he's not responsible for other people's craziness. I hope you have a warm, wonderful family Christmas together. God bless. Let's start this story at the beginning. 4th of July 2022, spending the weekend with my parents at the lake, me, my son, mom and dad. While heading back to the resort from the lake, dad driving, mom in the passenger seat, son behind dad, me behind mom, I noticed that my mom was texting someone on her phone with the screen cover open so that dad couldn't see what she was doing. I find this kind of thing odd but didn't think much of it until I started to read the messages she was sending. She's messaging some guy and having a very intimate conversation. Immediately I become extremely mad but I don't want to start drama in the truck while my son is there so I wait until the end of the weekend to verify that I'm correct in my assumptions. As the weekend goes on, I'm looking over her shoulder every chance I get trying to read her phone, and lo and behold, I get more. So I confronted her over text with my dad in the room, to which she denied everything. I'm not shocked, so I told her she needed to tell dad. After that, I went to bed and stayed silent. She hadn't told him when we left on Sunday to head home. 
So my dad worked nights and at the time, my mom helped me with my son because my work schedule didn't allow me to take him to school in the morning and work 10 hour days. So I would take him to my mom's every night and she would take him to school in the morning. After the 4th of July, I was absolutely angry, but I didn't have a choice. I still needed her, so I put that aside and did what I needed for my son. I told her she needed to tell dad everything and figure it out. So what does she do? She kicks him out and lies to him. So my dad feels blindsided by this and like he has nobody. Growing up, my dad and I didn't have the best relationship, but during all of this, he relied on me to be there for him, so I was. For everything from him just being lonely to having a heart attack scare, I was there for all of it, and mom was nowhere to be found except constantly starting fights with dad over stupid stuff. Let's jump to this summer. My mom asked to take my son for the weekend to go to a local amusement park and stay at a resort nearby. I agreed because I still needed her. Well, the weekend goes by and she drops him off. Then, as he's telling me about his weekend, he tells me about Nana's friend who was there with them. So I pulled up a picture of him. Yes, I stalked his Facebook and figured out everything I could. And I asked my son if that was him and he said yes. Well, my mom never bothered to tell me he would be there, so I immediately got angry. Within two weeks, I gave her back my key to her house. I almost started a fight doing that without saying anything to her. Fast forward to this year in August. I received a fantastic opportunity with my work, allowing me to take a job in the office and leave the shop. I work in a steel shop and move into the engineering department. Right before my son was scheduled to start school, my boss allowed me to change my schedule enough so that I could take my son to school in the morning and be off to pick him up in the afternoon. Now, my son hasn't seen my mom since summer school let out. Since his birthday is in November, my mom asked if she could pick him up from school and spend some time with him for his birthday. I said no because she decided not to bother to tell me about her little trip with her boyfriend that she didn't bother to tell me about. She never fully apologized for anything. She just called me childish and said that even my dad wasn't as upset as I was. Of course, I know that's not true because I talk to my dad constantly. She then tries to guilt trip me by saying that I'm only hurting my son by keeping him away from her. But the thing is, he hasn't even asked about her since the end of summer school. He was never excited to go to her house every night. He wanted to stay with me and have me take him to school, but I couldn't because of work. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. You had a problem keeping silent while you used your mom for your benefit. And now that you don't need her, you're happily on your moral high horse. I'm sorry, but grow up. This is between your parents. Your mom's relationship with another man is none of your business and you shouldn't have been reading her texts. You're also an idiot for not realizing that she's punishing her son by using him to hurt her mother. Whatever drama the adults have going on has nothing to do with him and he's too young to understand or be told. All he knows is that he can no longer see his grandma after years of her being one of his daily caregivers. I'm outraged. You obviously got your morals from your mother. If you didn't read, Opie wasn't happy before, but things are what they are. Last summer, the mother completely broke Opie's trust by taking the kid to an amusement park with her boyfriend without informing Opie the boyfriend would be there. And that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So it's not like she was exposing the kid to the boyfriend before, or if she was, Opie had no knowledge. But now, knowing for sure, it's perfectly legitimate what Opie has done. The mother chose to admit the boyfriend would be on that weekend. OP has every right to say she doesn't want the child exposed to her mum's boyfriend. If she goes behind her back, as she already did, then how can she be trusted? You are not the idiot. Your concerns about your mum's behaviour and lack of communication are valid. Prioritising your son's well-being and your own boundaries is important. It's your responsibility to keep your child away from bad influences, and she is a big one. It's even more crazy that she had the nerve to bring an affair partner around your son. May her soul roast in the bad place. My wife, 32, and I, 33 female, have been married for five years. We're both from Florida but moved to another state a year ago. We jointly own a house back in Florida, which we turned into a rental property and rent out to Hubert, a retiree who's in his 80s and is a very good tenant. Hubert has no family or people taking care of him. He can move around and live on his own okay, but is pretty frail. So whenever my wife and I travel back to Florida, which is rather frequent, we usually check in on him, bring him meals, fix whatever he needs around the house, etc. My mother-in-law had often visited our Florida house when we still lived there. She's recently been hinting that she's retiring soon and she wants to move into the house and rent from us, 
which both my wife and I think is a bad idea because mother-in-law is saying she'll pay rent now, but we both know that's not going to stick for long before she started living there rent-free because we are family. Mother-in-law has also mentioned to other people in the family that once Hubert isn't renting the house anymore, which won't be very long because of how frail he is, she plans on arranging with my wife and me to move in. Last week, mother-in-law briefly saw Hubert while we stopped by the house so I could fix something for him. Mother-in-law commented in the car ride back that Hubert's looking frailer, it's too dangerous for him to live independently, and that I need to prepare for when he moves out, if something happens. That comment rubs me the wrong way because I know exactly where she's going with this, so I told her to mind her own business, and Hubert can die in the house if he wants to, I'm not asking him to move out and it's none of her concern. Mother-in-law then said God wouldn't want me speaking to an elder in that manner and I responded that God wouldn't want her banking on an elderly person to die. That made her really mad and she hasn't talked to me since. My wife is on my side and has spoken up for me to her mother multiple times in the past. Still, for this specific situation, we both have pre-discussed and agreed I would take a bit more of the heat and the lead in saying no, we are entertaining mother-in-law wanting Hubert to move out. Was I an idiot for my response? Not the idiot. You're being kind and caring to Hubert, who has made a home of your rental, and he may well want to live out his days there if he can and doesn't need to go into residential care. You're wise not to let your mother-in-law move in and mooch in the future either. Kudos to your wife for backing you. Spot on. Here's hoping Hubert lives until he's a hundred. Tell your mother-in-law you don't intend to rent to her no matter what happens to Hubert, so she can leave the poor man alone. She'll be angry, but she's going to be angry either way, and if you deal with it now, you'll probably spare yourself a lot of future drama. Renting to family is always a bad idea.